Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kweku. If you are new around here, I am a pharmacist. Today I'm going to be reviewing five simple things that you can do to mitigate some of the side effects of metformin or to reduce the side effects of metformin. As you're probably already aware, metformin is the most one of the most widely prescribed medications for type 2 diabetes. It is also sometimes used off-label for the management or treatment of PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. Metformin is generally considered safe and it's very widely used like I already said, but like any other medication, it is not devoid of side effects. It definitely has side effects. Most of metformin side effects to be gastrointestinal related. That means it has something to do with an abscess stomach, diarrhea, flatulence, vomiting, nausea, things of that sort. Long-term use of metformin has also been associated with a deficiency in vitamin B12. And I'll talk a little bit more of that towards the end of the video. Now, despite all the issues surrounding metformin, metformin is still regarded by the American Diabetic Association as one of the first-line medications for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Just because not only does it lower the blood sugar levels effectively, it also has some cardiac protective functions in some scenarios. And also, it is relatively inexpensive. You know, I know there's been a lot of new medications out these days, but you go back and you realize that metformin is still a very effective choice for the management of type 2 diabetes. So that is the reason why it is necessary for people to be able to manage some of these side effects so they can stay on metformin. Before I proceed any further though, I just wanted to hint you that this review is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for medical advice from your physician. So the number one tip to reduce the side effect or the upset stomach that metformin causes is to take it after the heaviest meal of the day. If you happen to take metformin once a day, then taking it after the heaviest meal of the day has been shown to reduce the effect of the upset stomach and the diarrhea and the nausea that is associated with metformin. If you happen to take it twice a day, the general recommendation is that take your two doses as far apart as possible or take it at the opposite ends of the day. So instead of say taking metformin after lunch and then after dinner, you are probably better off taking it after breakfast and then after dinner. It has been shown that if you do it this way, it tends to mitigate some of the gastrointestinal or some of the stomach upset that occurs when one takes metformin. The second tip is to consider taking the extended release formulation of metformin. Now, a lot of the times for cost considerations, the immediate release metformin is prescribed because it is affordable. It is less expensive than the extended release. But there are more incidences of abscess stomach and side effects associated with the immediate release versus the extended release. So if it is agreeable with your doctor, discuss and see if the extended release would be an option for you. I know a lot of the time some insurance companies will require prior authorization in order for them to approve or pay for the extended release. But if your doctor is able to document that you had an adverse reaction to the immediate release, chances are very high that you can have the extended release approved so that you can take the extended release. The third thing to consider is to consider a dose reduction. Now, a lot of the metformin side effects, or a lot of the side effects associated with metformin are dose dependent. That means that the higher your dose, the greater the incidences or the greater the, the risk or chances of developing the side effects. So it will be a good idea sometimes when you're experiencing these side effects to work with your doctor to see if the, the, a dose reduction will be good for you. So a lot of times what they will do is they'll reduce you to the minimum possible dose and then as and when you tolerate it, the dose will be gradually increased uh, maybe after a week or so or maybe after two weeks depending on how quickly you are able to tolerate it. And then you can gradually work your way up to the desired dose that the doctor wants you to be on. Doing this has shown in a lot of instances to mitigate some of these gastrointestinal side effects associated with metformin. The fourth thing is to consider taking a vitamin B12 supplement. I say this because long-term use of metformin has been associated with malabsorption of vitamin B12. And vitamin B12 is key in a lot of the body's processes. And I want to single out memory. A lot of the times you hear that metformin causes dementia, metformin causes memory loss. That is due to the fact that long-term use of metformin has been shown to cause a malabsorption. In other words, you don't absorb enough of vitamin B12 in your system. And I did a video particularly detailing that observation and I will link it up there. So if you're interested, you can take a look at it and watch that video. So discuss with your doctor. Maybe they may do some blood levels to see if your vitamin B12 levels are not at the appropriate level. If that is the case, then the doctor may prescribe uh, a vitamin B12 
shot or pill or whatever the case may be for you. Typically, when you are very low, they, will, they would want to bring you up quickly and therefore they will recommend you getting some injections or shots to bring you up to the appreciable level. And then later on, they would let you take maybe some over-the-counter vitamin B12 preparation, something like that. And then the fifth one, which I personally am not a big fan of, is to switch the brands. So a lot of the times, people will react to one particular type of generic or one metformin from a particular company, but not the other. Some people swear by it and they say that if they switch from company A to company B, their issues were resolved. So if all these fail, that is also an option that you can consider. You can kind of talk with your pharmacist and negotiate with him to see if they can get you a different company or a different brand of metformin. Like I said, I'm not a very big fan of this. It's rare. It, it doesn't really solve a lot of the problems. But obviously, it's worth a shot if you've gone through all the other tips and tricks and nothing seems to be working. It's definitely worth trying. I thank you so much. I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, please hit the subscribe button if you have not already done so. And share with anybody else who you think may find useful as well. Thank you very much and I'll catch you on the next video.